Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be an updated brow routine, specifically around threading at home. I did a video, I think almost three years ago. I've been threading my brows since I was in eighth grade. I think my mom took me for my first ever threading session when I was 12 to now at 38, I do it on my own. It's one of those things that is such a time saver and especially right now during quarantine, this is something that can come in handy, but it is, it's a time when you really can't get out to do anything else and self-care is probably not top of mind for many um, that are on the front line. But as far as for those that are stuck at home that want to still kind of be able to take advantage of the time that you might have, it's a nice to have. And people always ask me, why do you thread over waxing um, or tweezing. I still tweeze because there are parts of the brow especially that you need to tweeze personally speaking when you're doing it on your own. And that is mainly because your skin has to be pretty taut in order for you to get the hairs that you need. Otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to pinch on skin that is a little too soft. And if you do that, that's when you get cut and then you get bumps and it's just not a good thing. So what I've learned is I thread on the top area like right here where i have baby hair so you can thread anywhere on your forehead and then i thread my upper lip people have asked can you do your sideburns can you do your chin you can do whatever you want if you're comfortable doing any part of your face or any part of your body by all means go for it i'm just going to show you guys the technique and what i personally do but another reason i really like threading versus waxing is because waxing to me is something that really pulls at the elasticity of your skin it's not something you're going to notice after six months or even two years but like 10 years, 15 years down the line. So if you start at like 18 and then now at 38, what you notice is waxing will pull at the sensitive eye area a lot more than threading will. Threading is more of like an exfoliation almost because you're threading and you're pulling the hair from its root and you're also taking off a layer of skin, like a dead layer of skin, and you just notice that you, you reveal really nice, clean, fresh skin, whereas waxing, you're taking it and you do the same in theory, but because you're pulling it, I feel like you are pulling at the elasticity. An esthetician told me that a long time ago and it just stuck with me and it's something that I just live by now. So I don't wax here or here because I feel like these are areas that you can get you know, fine lines and wrinkles. So I don't touch it. Threading I think gets a really bad rep as being something that is super painful and I think people are starting to catch on that it's really great. I think it just takes some practice at home to do. So do not get intimidated. This is my number one thing to tell people, do not get intimidated. Do not get discouraged if like you try this out for one or two times, you're like, oh, I can't get it. Just practice, practice, practice. Cause it took me honestly a good year. And then I was like really comfortable. And now I just do it, do it, do it. And it's a lifesaver, time saver, money saver. I'm gonna go over what we need. And then we are gonna get into the actual tutorials. Number one thing that you're gonna need is the red. I'm going to link everything that I'm using down below. People ask all the time, do I need a specific kind of thread? I picked up this thread when I was in India years ago. It's called Vanity. It's $5 a spool off Amazon and it's antibacterial thread. And it also is coated. You can't really feel it on its own, but it's coated with wax. So what I love about it is what I've noticed is when I've gotten my brows threaded in the past professionally, I tend to get little nicks and cuts, which then scab like the day after, two days after, and it just bothers me so much because it's like you're getting your brows done. They should look nice enough to be, you know, ready to go. And I just don't want it to be irritating my skin. If you don't have this thread, don't worry. You can use any thread that you have at home, any sewing thread that you have. The other thing that you're going to need is a spoolie. So you can use a regular spoolie like this. This actually came in a set with tweezers and a spoolie. And this is from GSQ by Glam Squad. I'm gonna leave a code down below for you guys. This is sold at CVS. I just love that it comes in its own pack. A spoolie is really important because I like to brush up my hair. And that again is going to give me exact precision for when I am threading both above and below. So below I will thread like a little bit right here, wherever again the skin is nice and taut, but um, it's going to allow me to give that brushed up look. And right now I like fuller brows. So people ask, how did you grow your brows in from you know when it was really in to where I'm thin? And for me, keeping them brushed up has enabled me to help them grow in more versus I used to brush them up and then just trim them fully. And I brush them up now and I trim just a little bit versus actually going in and going super close to 
the um, the brow itself. So tweezers are what you're going to need to really get into the bottom area to get the shape that you want. So I specifically use it for like little areas where I can't get in close enough and I don't want to mess up with threading because if you do go in with thread and it's too severe, you could take off a chunk of hair and you don't want that to happen, especially if you're trying out for the first couple of times. And then the other thing you're gonna need are baby scissors. Baby scissors mainly to again, just trim the upper part of the brows, like the excess hair. You don't, that's totally optional. You don't have to do that. Um, and then lastly is something to help moisturize your skin after you thread. So I love aloe vera gel. Um, it's something that is really going to help with inflammation and redness and irritation. And then two things that I don't have on me right now, but that are fantastic options if your skin is really sensitive. One is ice cubes. Sit, if you know that you have really sensitive skin that gets irritated and really inflamed, put some ice five minutes prior to threading on your lips and your eyebrows, and that's gonna help numb that area so it's not gonna be as painful. The second is Aura Gel, baby Aura Gel. It's a hack I found years ago, but it really, really does work. You take a little bit and you put it on your brows. It is going to numb that area. So honestly, and this is for my friends that have really, really sensitive skin, but you put that on, it is gonna numb that area. So when you are doing it, you're gonna be like, I don't really feel it, so it's great. And then also baby powder. And baby powder is mainly for those that have oily skin. So if you need to like soak up any of that excess oil because the thread is gonna work really well when you have nice, dry skin to work off of so it just glides on if it's too oily or too slick i just i don't think it works that well and you're gonna be stuck with kind of going over the skin versus actually grabbing onto the hair and pulling it out so now we are going to get straight into the tutorial and get our brows into shape so let's go i like to first brush up with a spoolie and what this allows me to do is just really get a good sense of the shape of my brows. So brows in general are never going to be identical and if you have identical brows then great for you. <laughs> Most of them are just even like a tiny tiny bit off or they can be. So you know you just want to kind of you can mimic to see what kind of shape you want. I personally like when it's filled in this brow always tends to be one that I favor because it's a little bit more full and it just has the shape that I want. So this is the point where you're going to either want to ice your brows and your upper lip for a little bit if you know that you are really sensitive. One thing I like to do is trim the upper parts of my brow. I used to go in pretty heavy and trim like a lot. I don't like to do that anymore. And generally when you're working with scissors, you want to make sure that this little part that's curved, there's always a little curve. The curve is sitting against your brow so that way it's going with the grain of the hair. Lightly trim. When I get to the front, like right here, I'm gonna go really lightly. And again, I don't want too much trimmed off, especially on this brow because this brow is thinner than this brow for me. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. You can see this brow is definitely thicker than this brow. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna touch this one too much. And the hardest thing is sometimes when you are working with a little bit of uneven brows, you kind of, I, I have been tempted in the past to make this one a lot thinner to match this one, but really I want this one to grow a little bit more. Okay, so you're gonna start with about a foot and a half of string and it is an approximation. So if you don't get it perfectly or if you feel like you need more, just start over, it's totally fine. So taking it and I'm taking both ends to meet at the end and I'm gonna make a little knot to create a sort of circle or lasso if you will. So this is what it looks like. So you wanna have your left hand fist over the knot. My right hand is dominant. So left hand here, right hand here. This is what this should look like. If you mess up, or you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough to make loops and things like that, don't worry, just keep trying and keep trying until you know what your comfort level is. I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm going to loop this around. So you see I'm making an X right there, but it's also on my hands right here. I do it about twice, okay? So twice, so I have a nice grip on my dominant hand, which is my right hand for me. This little part right here is going to act as almost the scissors or the tweezer or whatever you want to call it, it's going to remove the hair. 
Then with this hand, I'm taking the thumb and I'm using this motion to basically remove the hair. So from the right side to the left side, right going to left, left going to right. And you're using your two fingers. So your thumb and your pointer finger are what you're going to use. One thing that may happen is that after one brow, you may notice that this starts getting dull because your um, thread is going to get dull. So like, for instance, when I do my brows, I'll use one thread and then I'll start all over again from my upper lip. And that just makes sure that everything's really nice and clean. And then also it's just getting the hair out. General rule is the inner most part of your brow should be aligned with your nose right here. Okay. Then your arch, if you just flip this should be right. If this is done at a diagonal, your nose to this should be where your arch is. And then your eyebrow should end right that. So you always use this as your base. And you will go one, two, three. It may not be perfect, but that's generally how you can kind of keep the symmetry. And if you need to, you can mark it. You can put a little dot of eyeliner right there. Use white if you're a brunette like me. Then two, and then three. So we are gonna start with all this hair right here, and then all this hair at the top. My dominant hand, I like to turn, turn, turn. Three to four times is enough. On your fourth turn, stick your thumb in. And again, we're making the little chompers to get the hair out. Now, what I have learned is that going in the direction of the hair is what's gonna be easiest to remove the hair. But because you're getting used to this, just try both ways is what I would say. I'm going to push the hair down first because there are parts that I don't want to touch. And And you can see it's picking up skin. It's almost like a dead layer of skin is being exfoliated, which is super nice. So it might look a little lighter in this area. And the biggest thing that you wanna make sure is that you're obviously going really slow, especially the first couple of times, cause you don't wanna just take off a chunk of hair. For the center, we're gonna do the same idea going down. When you get super close up here, you want your skin to be super taut so you can pull it and you don't have more than the hands you have when you're doing it on your own. So I usually keep this like really precise area right in the front for tweezers. And now I'm gonna use tweezers to shape exactly the brow that I want. So again, these ones are from the GSQ line and you can see there are parts that were like super close up here next to the arch that I couldn't get in with my um, thread because it was too soft. Every few minutes or every few hairs, I like to kind of sit back and be like, okay, is this right? Is the arch where I want it to be? Is everything good? And then just pause for a second, take a beat, and then move on. Like this eyebrow always has more of an arch for me than this one. We're just gonna twist, twist, twist four, three, four times. And again, remember, right to left, left to right. And your dominant fingers are your thumb and your pointer. Push this down so I'm not pulling at the hair that I don't want to. And I'm focusing fully on all of this. See all the baby hairs right here? And you can thread your forehead like this, this is probably the best method. And so out of habit, I go this way first. And once I'm comfortable, and then I go against the direction of the hair growth. Do you see now how clean that area is? And you can go up here if you want. I used to thread my, my forehead and then I got it lasered and the first time I got it lasered, it was awesome. And then the second time, meaning like I got it lasered and then a few years later, it started growing back a little bit and I got it done and they took off too much or they made it too clean, like too perfect, which bugs me, but whatever, dealing with it now. Okay, so get 
very close and see ideally when you do the bottom of your brow you have this being held up but again because I'm doing this by myself you have to be really careful not to mess up your arch or your shape so just go in lightly Now you can see like this brow compared to what it was before, it just looks so much cleaner and it's like exactly where I need to be. Another trick I like to do is at the end, I'll go like this and I'll just make sure everything's even right here. For the upper lip, what you wanna make sure you do is the same issue that you have with doing your under brow is that it's not taut, right? There's You don't have anything holding it tight. So you wanna take your tongue and hold it wherever you're gonna be threading. So, mm -hmm -hmm. all that, all that hair, right? I went really fast doing that, but I find doing the upper lip is so much easier than your brows because you're just focusing on an open space and it's you're not worried about the shape or cutting into that at all. It's just more technique here again. So And this could work on your chin or anywhere. I don't really like doing any of that area. So now you can see the difference of my lip. And I am a little red. I don't get too red now, but if you tend to get irritated, again, ice for a few minutes, put the baby aura gel on. Um, and if you are oily, then put some of the baby powder on before you start. Now the only thing I'm gonna do is go in with some aloe. This one is the Dewpoint Versed. Um, moisturizing gel cream. The aloe is so great for when you get burns, if you have inflammation, if you have irritated skin, redness, it really helps calm all of that down. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and it feels cool to the touch and put that on. I'm also gonna put some lip oil on because my lips are ridiculously chapped. So just so you guys don't have to see that. Mm, so much better. That is how I thread at home. It takes me about 15 minutes to do. Brows are one of those things that I just feel like frame your face. So when my when I do my brows, it just feels so good. It's so great to have this technique in your arsenal of things that you can do, like in your skill set, honestly, because it just, you can do it whenever you want in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to spend too much money. It's easy and yeah. So anyways, I hope you guys found this little tutorial, this updated tutorial, Helpful. This may not be as relevant because this YouTube video is probably gonna last longer than what I'm gonna tell you guys right now, but I am doing an IG live next week. So if you gals or guys get the materials or supplies that you need to do this and you wanna hop on with me on IG live, I will let you guys know in the comments below uh, or in the description box below when that's gonna be happening. So be sure to join me on Instagram. I'm at Ami Desai and that's about it. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.